may consider to be a matter of because according to us, we believe and we respect the prophets. Uh, mm -hmm. we, if, and Jesus to us is a prophet, is not God, but yet we believe that he was a, a righteous man. He never practiced such, uh, you know, genocide. He never done anything like this in his life. We believe that he was a terrible man. Okay. Yeah, All right, well, well, then perhaps you should listen to his debates. Uh, you got a pen and paper? I'll give you the um, website where you can actually see the one um, with um, Sam Shimon and a couple of outtakes of the one that just happened. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh Maybe I'm ashamed of your religion. You are not man enough to keep your word, Nader Ahmed. I have your recorded video, not only audio. Listen carefully. I'm recording this video. I will post it in YouTube. I will post your promise and show everyone here that you have no courage to keep your words. Do you know why? Because you are a Muslim. Now, I'm going to ask you, are you going to do the debate you promised me to do to prove if you're a prophet is a prophet of God or you will not? Either you say yes or you say no. Simple and clear. Yes or no. Tell me in the text, please. Tell me in the text. It's my turn to speak now, uh, Nader. You made a promise in the room to debate me about you're a prophet. You made a promise. I can play it for you. Recorded video and audio. Shame on you to say I will debate. So why you are changing the topic? And not only that. I told you I will choose the topic and you agreed. Suddenly, you don't want to talk about it. So as long as you said you did and you agree, let us start the debate about your prophet. If you are a man to do it, let us do it. And everybody is my witness. I'm recording this in video. It's going to be posted in YouTube to make every Muslim see what kind of Muslim you are. Do what you promised me if you are a man. You're mine. I'm doing exactly what I promised you. I want everybody to see that this coward Christian prince is running away because he knows Islam condemns terrorism. You see? He has been teaching these things behind my back, you know, with ignorant Muslims trying to show that Islam is a religion of terror and stuff like that. But now I am going to bring this coward Christian prince to justice, but I'm going to do a lot more than that. And, I, and I'm going to show you that actually his God is the same as Adolf Hitler. The same thing. And that does prove Muhammad is a prophet, Christian prince. Okay? That proves Muhammad is a prophet because you have these two options here. You have these two books here. You have Allah, the Allah of the Quran, a God which condemned terrorism and genocide. Under no circumstances can you do this. And then you have the false Lord Jesus Christ as taught in your Bible that fully embraces genocide and terrorism as legitimate tactics of war. Which religion are you going to go with? If we use this as an acid test, then there's no question that Islam is a true religion. It is a Jesus of the Quran, which is the true Jesus, not the Hitler Jesus of the Bible. So you are a coward and you are running away from this topic because you know that you cannot refute the evidences. And just like how I smashed that coward Sam Shimon, you don't want to be next. So what's up? Are we going to have this debate or not, Christian Prince? You coward, come to the mic. Well, the coward is you and your prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. And I will go for this debate. And you. All right, Christian Prince, you know there's no cursing, uh, you know, each other's gods or goddesses or prophets and stuff like that. Now, I want everyone to know one thing in this room. If you start that type of behavior, he's looking for an excuse to get out of here. All right? He's looking for an excuse to get out of the octagon. So, I want everyone to notice this behavior of Christian Prince. Because, you know, according to a Muslim's belief, we're not obligated and we shouldn't entertain debates where you know, our, what we believe and hold sacred is just being, you know, humiliated and ridiculed, that doesn't prove anything, all right? So Christian Prince, you know, that's the only time I'm going to red dot you. You know, I'm pretty fair. I don't red dot in the, in the room unless you are just acting like a, uh, a jerk. But the thing is, now some people say, okay, well, why did you call Christians Hitler? 
you know, wait a second, that's not really a slur. Because during the, during the Nazi Holocaust, how many Christians really objected to the Holocaust? As Christopher Hitchens pointed out, one. And you know why? I'm sorry, they only condemned one Nazi. And do you know why? <laughs> because he married a Protestant woman. It was only after the defeat of Hitler when people started having a problem with it. But anyways, I was just answering that question in the mic. But So if we're ready to do this, because now we have an acid test. If you really do condemn terrorism, and you really do condemn genocide, okay, then you have to be a Muslim. Because Islam is the only religion which teaches that. Does that sound good to you, Christian Prince? Go ahead. Very good, and I challenge you to start the debate. You are too coward to let me speak. You are the one who called Jesus Hitler. When you allowed yourself to invite somebody to debate you, and you start calling Jesus as Hitler, I will say whatever I want about your prophet, and you have no right to stop me. As long as you, you can call my Lord names, you have no right to say to me what I can say about your prophet, the prophet of Islam. I don't call him prophet even. Now listen, let us start. Three minutes for you, three minutes for me. And we are recording this in video. You have no right to redoubt me. Stop giving speeches. I will cook you. I will serve you. I will make you the joke of every Muslim. And this is the topic you choose. And I will answer you from your Quran. I will show everyone how filthy is your prophet. And how ignorant you are when you say you can debate me. And the people in the world will be witnessing the video. Let us start. As long you are going to talk about killing people, about destroying people, is it true in Islam you can kill kids, kids who never did anything, and this is exist in your book, your mic? Uh, you had uh, about another uh, minute 30 seconds. Did you want to take that, Christian Prince? Don't worry about my minutes. Answer me. Is it true that in your Quran and your Islam, you are allowed to kill little kids, innocent kids? You remember before? You asked me a question. I'm asking you the same question. You're mine. Don't give me a speech. Either you say yes or no. And let us go to proofs and reference. Go ahead. All right, I get two minutes at the mic. Absolute, well, it all depends. Chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran will answer that. Okay, chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran. It says over there, that basically this gives us a guideline of how Muslims are supposed to fight wars. And this has not been abrogated. Okay, so don't even go to the tafsir of Jalal and say this was abrogated or else I will bring you to justice right over here for deceiving everybody. Okay, let's see over here inside chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran where it says over there. It says over there that the Muslims are allowed to slay. They're, this is actually a warrant against the infidels of when and why we can kill infidels. Okay, let's, please, let's see what it says over here. It says, you will find others that wish to have security from you and security from your own people. From, from this verse, we're supposed to monitor the infidels, the kuffar. Okay? Uh, and it says over here, every time they are sent back, they are sent to, uh, every time they are sent to temp temptation, they yield there too. Now, this is very important. If they withdraw not from you, number one, number two, nor offer you peace, number three, nor restrain their hands, take a hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. In their case, we have provided you with a clear warrant. So, when Muslims fight wars, we are supposed to first filter them out through these three uh, what I call it the 491 spot check. Number one, are they offering you, I'm sorry, number one, are they not withdrawing from you? Number two, are they not offering you peace or restraining their hands? In that case, you can only kill them. So from here, you cannot kill innocent civilians. Now, uh, Christian Prince, do me a favor and go ahead and quote the, uh, the chapter in the Quran of where the prophet Kidder killed a young child. Okay, and I'm going to make you the laughing stock. Please come up and quote that ayat of the Quran. <laughs> All right, go ahead. The mic is yours. Hello, my chick. Can you hear me? Well, as long as you know the verse, what about you start reading it for me? 
and let us laugh at your God. And I want you to read the explanation for the verse in the same time. You mention it and you ask for it. Your mind. And you see your Muslim friends, they are calling me names. I can return that according to our agreement. When a Muslim call me names, I will call his prophet names. So teach your Muslim to be he. So Nader, take the mic and explain to me that verse in the cave surah where it says that you can kill a kid who never did a crime. An innocent child. For what? For nothing. Why? Your mind. All right. Nobody uh, says anything to Christian Prince. Nobody curses his god or goddesses, whatever. And I do apologize for the Hitler comment, although I do believe there's facts to support that. But if you don't want that uh, association, fine. Because we cannot have a debate if everyone's throwing mud on each other, okay? Nobody condemns Christian Prince in this room. All right? Okay, or else I'll already doubt you whether you're a Muslim or not. Okay, in response to your question, Christian Prince, what do I look like? Do I look like your white woman? Huh? Go get your white woman to go read these passages from the Quran. Don't dictate to me what to read and what not to read. Okay? If you have a point, you need to come up here and address and clearly articulate the point, and I'll come and refute you. All right? Don't sit there and give me your commands. So go ahead. You're quoting the, the ayat about the prophet Kidder, and you think somehow you're going to make a point with this, but just watch what I do with you, okay? Okay, Jewish Salafi. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce you, Jewish Salafi. Go ahead, uh, Christian Prince. Oops, sorry. Okay, thank you. Well, you are not my my not uh, my white women. You are my Pakistani women. Open Surah 18, verse number 74, and read for me the explanation of any scholar you choose. Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Ibn Kathir. And this is the verse in the front of you. And the verse translated by Muslims, and this is the official government website of Saudi Arabia, saying clearly that this little child is an innocent child, have no crime, and he did no crime, but he was killed by the order of Allah. And you will see in the explanation that you're a prophet, the prophet of Islam. He was smashing the head of this boy in the wall and he cut meat out of his shoulder, hating him, torturing him even after death, even after he killed him, even after he slew him, he was doing that. And you are telling me Islam against genocide? Your mic, Nader Ahmed. Again, don't tell me to read anything for you, okay? Did he show you any reference for what he was saying? He showed you absolutely nothing. He's lying to you. But this shows you his stupidity, ladies and gentlemen. And Christian Prince, don't run away, because now it's time to barbecue you. He doesn't even know what genocide is, okay? You're so ignorant, all right? Killing one kid, for whatever reason, is not classified under genocide. But that doesn't refute chapter 4 verse 91. Chapter 4 verse 91 made it very clear. Okay, when we go into battle, the Muslim warrior goes into battle, he has to use the 491 spot check. 491 spot check makes it very clear. Number one, if they withdraw not from you, meaning they're lined up and they're ready to attack. Okay, and they're just not going back. So you're like, come on, back off. Number two, they're not offering you peace. You're trying to reason with them. They're not offering you peace. Okay. Number three, uh, not offering you peace. They are. Uh, they're not restraining their hands, meaning they're armed and dangerous, and they're not putting down their weapons. In their case, we allow you to kill them. So for the Muslim, when we fight, we have to fight in one of these three. Uh, we only. We can only kill people that do not fall in one of these three categories. 
All right. So there's no way a Muslim can commit an act of genocide. But if Christian Prince says no, you can kill, you can uh, commit an act of genocide, then he needs to come forward and he needs to show that proof. He's paraphrasing verses in the Quran. He never quoted a verse of the Quran. He says, your Quran says something about this. Quote the verse. I quoted the verse for you. You need to quote the verse. You need to quote the tafsir. Don't listen to his paraphrasing. Okay? And let me remind you folks. Almost everybody in this room is an English-speaking person. Okay? 15 seconds left, actually. You're wrong. <laughs> and you got to debate in the English vernacular because the Arab charlatan when he is getting barbecued they start speaking Arabic to you alright everyone here understands English my time's up go ahead first now that Ahmed you are a coward and you are a liar because I gave the proof right away I said to you read chapter 18 verse number 74 guys did I say that this guy what happened to him is what Muhammad he said that the Muslims the Satan do pee in his ears this is why he could not hear me secondly you said I don't understand what the word genocide means you said killing one man is not a genocide it's not according to your Quran it sounds like you know nothing about your Quran open with me and first let me show you this one this is the verse in the front of your eyes I will, I will post it let me give it to you in English and this is your translation your God in Surah 5 verse 32 saying that the one who killed one one innocent people as if he killed all mankind so according to your religion this is a genocide go and learn your Quran before you open your mouth and this is the chapter in the front of everybody and this is the translation made by Muslims not by me Surah 5, verse number 32. Now we will go back. You say, give me the proof that your prophet, he killed that man. He slew him, cut his head. And he was smashing his head with the wall. And after that, he cut meat from his shoulder. Torturing him for no reason. Where is that? This is in Surah. Listen carefully. Don't tell me I did not give you. And this is the Islamic link. The official Islamic link of Saudi Arabia chapter 18 verse number 74 and this is Al-Qurtubi I challenge you to read it your mind listen carefully guys no it's not my time yet he will say I cannot read he's illiterate like he's a prophet you see the Arab charlatan when he's getting barbecued <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna start speaking Arabic now look at this look at this here folks he knows he's speaking to an English speaking person but he doesn't have a problem when Arab when when uh, when English speaking people debate Islam okay he gave you a link in Arabic nobody here can read that nobody here can read that do you know why he gave you a link in Arabic because what is written in there is not what he wants what what we see in there there's no genocide in there Nowhere in that link did they say you can commit genocide. Do you know what the link says, folks? Because you can't speak Arabic. You see, this is how the Arab charlatan, how they try to trick people. Now, Christian Prince, you got to speak English. Don't speak Hebrew. Don't speak... <laughs> don't speak Spanish. You got to speak English, all right? And you got to give links in English. And we'll look at you. Okay, now... Here's a situation, where, and this is your prophet. You know who your prophet is he's talking about? He's talking about the prophet Kidder. Okay, he's talking about the prophet Kidder. And what exactly is the situation over there? Kidder, the Lord revealed a prophecy to Kidder that this boy is going to go up and do something, oh, uh, do something terrible to his parents. Okay, and that's why that boy was killed. But that has nothing to do with chapter 4, verse 91. Folks, I want everyone to see tonight that this coward Christian prince is running away from chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran. I proved to you from 491, there's no way a Muslim can commit an act of terrorism. And you're just like that coward Sam Shimon who ran away from chapter 4, verse 91. And I'm going to, just like I barbecued him, I'm going to barbecue you with 491, okay? So let's go along with Christian prince's canard, okay? kids who you know are going to do something evil to your parents you can kill these children okay that's not what Islam teaches but let's go along with a canard okay fine
Time, my time's up, Christian Prince. First, from where you did read that this child, he want to do something to his parents. Secondly, I will make everybody laugh at you to claim to be a scholar in Islam who pray to his God Allah in Arabic, but he do not know Arabic. So now it's my fault that your God Quran in Arabic and all your books in Arabic, but you want to prove me wrong in English. Nader Ahmed, I challenge you to bring an Arab guy, the room is full of them. This is an Islamic section. To read for us what I post for you from Al Qurtubi. If you do not do that, you are a coward and you are a liar. Is that fair, guys? This is Al Qurtubi, official Saudi website. You choose a Muslim guy you trust. He swear in the name of Allah and the Quran and his prophet Muhammad that he will do translate and he do it in the top of that Nadir Ahmad you have no excuse because you can take the link as it is or the text and you post them in Google translation and you will get the translation and I want to ask you again how you pray to your God in Arabic when you don't speak Arabic this is a proving that Muslims they are not really Muslims because the one who say words, he do not know what it's mean. It's mean he's a fool. And you just prove to us that every Muslim is a fool if he live in Pakistan. Because people in Pakistan don't speak Arabic, but they pray in Arabic. They do not understand the language they are saying. How you say that? Because you are doing a copy machine. So, bring a Muslim right now. The room is full of it. And let him read for me. And let us see who is the liar. Me or you? Yeah. It's barbecue time. Christian Prince, this coward, is running away from chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran. I'm going to repeat it until you are burnt crisp. <laughs> chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran makes it very clear. Under no circumstances can you commit an act of terrorism. You must perform the 491 spot check against your enemies. Because the Quran said, in their case... In their case, we've offered you with a clear warrant uh, to kill them, okay? Tonight's not the topic of how I pray and, you know, how Muslims pray if they don't know Arabic. That's not the topic tonight. As you can see, because Christian Prince is, uh, you know, not able to answer and refute chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran, he's going into all these other topics, okay? Now, I have already told you about this little boy. I've given you the answer, and, you're, and you did not refute a word I said. Rather, you started talking about why, people, why Muslims can't speak Arabic. Okay, that's not the topic. But look at the hypocrisy of Christian prince. Those Christians who attack Islam, like your, that coward dog, Sam Shimon, friend of yours, he doesn't speak Arabic. Oh, but that's okay. You support him. You support his ministry against us. You support his debates. What about Matt Slick? What about your friends who, who attack Islam? That's okay, you see, folks, they don't know Arabic. So you can see the hypocrisy and the stupidity of this person I'm debating, okay? So chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran, if you don't answer this, then pretty much you're cooked, all right? So uh, I have 30 more seconds, but there's really no need to do it. I've already answered the thing about the boy who was killed. The Lord revealed a prophecy to him and told him that this guy was going to do something terrible to his parents, and that's why he was killed. Okay, you didn't refute that. Go ahead, Christian Prince. The mic is yours. And we will debate in English. And the people in this room, we got like, what, 100 people in this room? They don't read Arabic. They read English. The mic is yours. Uh, Nader Ahmed, you said Sam Shamoon is a dog. Uh, are you remind me of your prophet when he ordered all the, you know, the Muslims to kill all the dogs in the city of Mecca and Medina, except the female dog. She ran to the prophet and she said, don't call me, kill the prophet. I am a Muslim dog. So before you call people dogs, go and read Surah Al-An'am, chapter number 6, where it says all animals are Muslims. So shame on you to mention dogs when all animals are Muslims, not Christians. And Sam Shamon for sure is no Muslim. You are the one who is a Muslim. So according to your Quran, your brothers and sisters in Islam are dogs and cats and the chicken and cockroaches. Secondly, you coward, the room is full of Muslims. And you know what? Even in English, you are not willing to read it. Show me from where you got that this man, he will do something bad to his parents. Like what he will do? Like what? And how you can kill somebody before he do things even? 
How you can kill somebody before he do his sin or his crime? This is mean proving a lie in the Quran. Because if your God will kill everybody, will do something bad before he do it, nobody will exist. So why that boy? Because simply, your God Allah is false. And the one who created that verse is making up a story. A story never happened and never been real. If every kid in the future he will be bad for his mother or his father in Islam, in the future, which means he did not do it yet, it means nobody will be like that in the future. If everybody, and according to the story, go and read it, you do not know your religion, it is says that this boy, he will be apostate. He will not be a believer. This is why he was killed. This is another proof that Islam is false. Why? Because if you will kill him before even he do his crime, it means Allah is a criminal. Because this is not fair and this is not justice. Let him do his crime and then you punish him. You don't punish someone before he do his crime. Read for me, Nader Ahmed. In English, in Arabic, I don't care. Your mic. All right, Christian Prince, please watch your time. That was uh, 20 seconds over you went, and I still let you talk. You know, the topic tonight, I made it very clear. We have 4,000 dead American soldiers, and one of the most crucial topics of today's time is the whole issue about terrorism. You know, today was that, <coughs> well, that milestone. What the heck does this have to do with the topic of what we're talking about tonight? Tonight, it has been proven that Islam condemns terrorism. And we accept everything Christian Prince says. It's, it's a twisted interpretation, but let's just go along with it. It doesn't prove a thing, folks. It proves absolutely nothing, okay? The whole issue of Kidder and about, the, about, this, about killing a boy before he apostates, okay, that has nothing to do with the topic. He's running away from chapter 4, verse 91, I'm out of breath. I'm, I'm tired of chasing this guy. Okay, so chapter 4, verse 91 makes it very clear. You cannot commit an act of terrorism. But there's so many other clear passages on this topic, okay? But anyways, um, now that we've made it clear, uh, now, let, now let's go, let me talk about the issue about Kidr, okay? Let's read the Quran very carefully over here. How did this, bo how did, how did this prophet know about Kidr? It's because Allah revealed it to him. Okay, so yeah, um, if God reveals to you that this boy will do something bad, and this, and remember, it was a prophet who did that. I don't see what's wrong with that. Okay, God is the ultimate judge, and God does whatever he wants to. But that has nothing to do with the indiscriminate killing of innocent civilians. Now, Christian Prince, I want to make it very clear, we're sticking on the Islam topic right now, okay? Because we're going to deal with Islam thoroughly, because right after we're done, we're going to go after your Lord and Savior, and we're going to find out what Christianity teaches on the exact same topic, and don't you dare run from me. The mic is yours. Oops. I will ask people in the room, guys, did he answer? Or what he said, that yes, this boy, Allah, he wanted to kill him. This is the point. You just said yes. Allah is a criminal. Is killing an innocent boy. He did nothing. And he's a Muslim, by the way. He is not from the enemy. He is not a Christian. He is not a Jew. He want to kill him even before he do his crime. And this is what is exposing the God of Islam. Because where is the word justice? How you wanna, how you wanna justify killing someone he did not do his crime yet? This is not in war. This is not somebody is attacking me and attacking him, eye for an eye, no. This is a kid, he's a Muslim. He do nothing, he did nothing, and he knew nothing about the future even. The Prophet of Islam, he see him, he slaughter him, he cut his head, he smash him with the wall, he cut his meat, and he torture him. And you will never read what the Quran is saying, because the Quran is saying an innocent boy, which means this boy he never did and he will never do anything bad. Because this is a contradiction for the Quran. How the Quran say this is an innocent boy, and at the same time he's a criminal. 
An onesent is an onesent. And this is your prophet saying he's an onesent. Which means he is onesent. Do you see it? How you kill an onesent man, or sorry, boy, he never did a crime. And as long as he's an onesent, it's mean he is pure and he don't deserve to be killed. Read. But this has nothing to do with the topic of terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about is God an ultimate, uh, is his justice just? That's a different topic, okay? I quoted you chapter 4, verse 91, which talks about the Muslims' behavior in the wartime, okay? Now let's go to this hadith, which I'm going to quote for you over here, which sort of talks about this topic. Let me post it in the text so you could all read, okay? Uh, I think I'll have to break it up over here. Uh, I'm going to have to break this up. Just give me one second. So it should be very clear tonight for everybody, ladies and gentlemen, that it's... Sorry about that. Let's read this together. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that he used to not kill the children, okay? Because the Prophet which he's talking about is Kidr, not Prophet Muhammad, okay? Let's make that right. Let's get that clear. Uh, the Messenger of Allah said used to, used to not kill the children. So thou should not kill the children. Thou should not kill them unless you know... You could know what Kidder could have known about the, about the child he killed, or uh, could distinguish between a child who would grow up to be a believer and then a disbeliever. Okay, and it turned to be a dis disbeliever, so that you killed the prospective non-believer and left the prospective believer aside. So here's the thing: the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to never kill children. He said the only way you could kill children is if you can look at it, is if you know the prophecy and the future of this child that he will grow up to be a disbeliever. Okay, because that's what the case... Now, there is nobody here who has that ability. Okay? It was God who gave Kidder this special ability. Now, what this has to do with the topic of terrorism, folks, I don't know. My time's up. Go ahead. I dare you come to debate Ayatollah. You're a pussy. Uh, Mark, your prophet is not in here right now. You are calling the wrong name. Nadir. So you are saying, everybody heard you, because the prophet, he knew the future, he killed this boy. Does that mean, this is the only boy at that time, he will be the sinner? Only this boy, he will be killed? This boy became a dangerous for the religion of Islam? Is it your prophet who said that every man is a sinner? Every mankind is a sinner. This is mean your prophet have to kill every mankind. Why only this boy? I challenge you to give me an answer. He is just a boy like all, all, all boys. All of us, we do sin. This is no answer. Until now, you did not tell me even why he did torture him. Why he is cutting his head, smashing his head with the wall and taking meat from his shoulder. If someone, he did not do the crime, and he knew nothing about it, how you can justify that? You said Allah, he told him. So what if Allah told him? All of us, we would do sin. Why the Prophet Al-Khadr did not kill all the people for doing the sin in the future? Even the Prophet of Islam is a sinner in the Quran. Not only sinner. The Quran says that the sin is a break in the back of Muhammad. This is mean Al-Khadr, if you see Muhammad, you have to kill him. Al-Khadr, if you see the father of Muhammad, you have to kill him because Muhammad, according to the Quran, according to Surah 5, verse 28, he is a filthy, dirty man. According to Surah 5, verse 28, Muhammad saying, and I can show you the hadith too, if you go and read the explanation, that every, every Muslim done, my time, take the mic. Answer me, sir. What is this? What is this idiot babbling about? <laughs> what the heck is he talking about? This has nothing to do with the topic of does Islam promote terrorism? 
Okay, the indiscriminate killing of innocent children. Now, Christian Prince, you got to remember, I want we also got to talk about the Bible as well. But right after we get done talking about Islam, because we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 491 spot check, chapter 4, verse 91. We're going to take the 491 spot check, and we are going to compare it with what the Bible says about the killing of innocent civilians. Okay, now, I hope you have honor enough not to go running out of this room when that time comes, okay? Anyways, let's talk about this. Um, where does it say I look at look at the way this guy lies and deceives? And I'm gonna I'm gonna barbecue on I'm gonna barbecue you on this. Where does it say in Islam you can kill all sinners? Where does it say that? You don't even know what the heck you're talking about, Christian Prince. Let's make it. Let's read the Hadith again very clearly. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to not kill the children. So the Prophet Muhammad used to not kill the children. What don't you understand? So thou should not kill them unless, okay, you know what Kidder could have known. And there's no way anybody could know what Kidder could have known. How can you look at a boy and, and, and see the future? Nobody has that type of knowledge. Okay? Let's, let's keep reading. Or you could distinguish between a child who would grow up to, uh, grow up, uh, who would grow up to be a believer. A child who would grow up to, or a, a child who would grow up to be a non-believer, so that you kill the prospective non-believer, meaning someone who would leave his faith, okay, and left the prospective believer aside. So here, the thing, what is what is saying here, is that the child would grow up to be a non-believer, and he says, well, "Do you have that kind of knowledge?" Well, no, I can't look at a kid and figure that stuff out. Then you can't kill children. That's what the hadith says. All right. Now, what don't you understand? Okay. So, anyways, but this really, oh, my time's up. Go ahead. You know, Nader, I want you right now to get me a Muslim to read for us my proofs. Because you are an illiterate, like your prophet, you cannot read Arabic. This is a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. And the hadith is in front of you. The book of Al-Maghazi. Hadith of Bani Nadir. Hadith number 3724. Everyone can open it and you will see. They ask the prophet if they can kill the kids. About killing the kids of the Jew. He said, Wahum minhum. They are from them. Kill them. So what you say to us is a lie. And this is the hadith again. And I challenge you to ask a Muslim who speaks Arabic to read for us. And this is my proof that you are scared from reading it. Because why you don't want a Muslim to read for us in Arabic? When all your religion is Arabic. Secondly, if you read chapter 18 verse number 80, you will see that this youth, he did not do anything. They just feared in the future he would do something. Which means it's not sure. Do you see it? They fear. It is not sure he would do anything. It is just a fear. So if you fear your kid, he would do something in the future, you kill that kid. And actually the, the, the prophet in here is not killing his kid even. He is killing a stranger kids. Just because he fear. And look what the verse is saying. Allah saying, so we desire that the Lord will exchange him for him, as if he's a toy. Have you ever heard about a God, he want to kill your son to give you someone better, as an exchange? What, he is a part of a car? I want you to read for me, sir. Read for me, chapter 18, verse 80, verse 18. The mic is uh, like I said, I'm not your white woman, uh, Christian Prince. You're going to have to read your own verses and explain that to us, okay? First of all, all that crap which he talked about, he gave you not a single reference. What reference? It doesn't say that. Oh, it's in this Arabic link. Find an Arab to read it. Why don't you go... All these references, by the way, are in English, okay? So anyway, there's nobody in this entire room, maybe one or two people, who have any... who could even read that. Okay, now... You know, I've already exposed your hypocrisy. You don't have a problem with people attacking Islam and debating Muslims by attacking Islam, like Sam Shimon, who can't read Arabic. You don't have a problem with that. But you could all see the double standard and hypocrisy of this guy. Okay? But anyways, let's talk about that hadith about uh, waminhum waminhum. They are from amongst them. It's not talking about the Jewish kids. You're lying. I challenge you right now. Show me that hadith. Okay? I thank you, Outlaw, for posting the hadith database. It doesn't say you can kill all the Jewish kids. Okay? You're lying again. But anyways, 
this is time, this is your barbecue time, because I always want to catch you in a lie. Okay? Um, hold on a second here. Uh, so anyways, post the hadith, because I refuted this in the debate, by the way. So, um, you know, what we're seeing here is that Christian Prince is just recycling garbage. Anyways, uh, go ahead, show me the hadith where it says they are from amongst them. Please show that for us. Go ahead, Christian Prince. First, it's very clear that Sam Shamoon, he made you Britain in somehow, because he keep repeating himself and his name for no reason. You see him in your dreams. This is explaining a lot of things for me. Secondly, I just told you the verse in English. I'm not giving it to you in Arabic. I gave you the verse in English, not in Arabic. And still, you don't want to read it. When I asked you to read it, you said to me, I am not your white women. Well, you are my Pakistani women. Surah 18, verse number 80. I am speech, I am posting in English. And this is the link in English. So, if I post to you in English, you will not read it. If I post it to you in Arabic, you will not read it. Secondly, the verse, the, 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 the hadith is in front of you in English. Outlaw is posting it in English for you. You will not read it. I challenge you to read it. You know why? Because you have no answer. And you will never read. Not in English. Not in Arabic. Not even in Japanese. In there you will see. As for the youth, his parents were people of faith. I'm reading in English, guys. And we feared he would grieve them. So he feared your God Allah is not sure. Your God Allah, he do not know. Because if he knew, he will not say we feared. He will say we knew he will do that. So what he did? He did exchange. He decided to kill him, so we desire... Listen, I'm reading in English now. Verse number 80. We did desire to exchange. Now, don't tell me you cannot read in English. You're mine. So it's clear uh, that Islam teaches nothing of terrorism. Look at his pathetic attempts to try to show uh, an act of terrorism in the Quran. <laughs> By showing that God ordered and ordained the killing of a boy who would grow up and do something terrible to his parents. Okay? And as I quoted you the hadith where it talked about, you know, that had you know, have you had the knowledge which kid there had. Okay, whether he feared or not is irrelevant. That's really not the topic tonight. So chapter 4 verse 91 has gone unrefuted. It's clear tonight that Islam condemns terrorism because a Muslim, if he is to engage in war, he is supposed to number one. You know, he said, if the, uh, uh, what the verse says, he must check these three things. Number one, are they withdrawing not from you? Number two, they're not offering you peace. And number three, they are, they're not restraining their hands. In their case, we have given you with a clear warrant to kill them. Slay them wherever you find them. That's what the verse says. So we as Muslims, we got we to gotta check these three things. We just can't indiscriminately kill um, innocent men, women, and children. Okay, based on this, uh, based on this verse over here. Okay, the verse which he's talking about, you know, this is talking about if you have knowledge of a boy who's going to do something in the future, you know, this is something which the prophet, which the prophet Kidder had. Okay, the prophet Kidder had this knowledge. That has nothing to do with genocide. That has nothing to do with terrorism. It has nothing to do with war. Okay, so really. What's happening here is that Christian Prince cannot refute chapter 4, verse 91, so he's redirecting you to something which is so irrelevant and ridiculous, and all he's doing, he just wants to make a mockery out of Islam. He's hoping that, okay, if I can just make a lot of jokes and, and uh, you know, antics, people are going to somehow, uh, somehow that's going to change the topic. So, Christian Prince, you need to show us terrorism in the Quran. Go ahead. As you see, guys, he will never read. You know why? Because he have no answer. Now it's time to cook you in your verse. This is the verse you keep talking about. Open the book of Ajalalain. And you will see your Quran. And I want to say thank you for mentioning this verse. Saying, don't ever be peaceful with anyone. Don't be friend to anyone. Kill them. Those people, you cannot take them as a friends. You cannot give them security. 
So people, they are seeking peace. And you have an order to kill them. Peace in Islam is a fitna. Which means, is a deceiving. Don't believe in peace. And I will show you a verse from the Quran saying, وَلَا تَجْنَحُوا لِسْسِلْمُ وَأَنْتُمْ الْأَعْلَوْنَ Don't ever cry for peace. When you have the upper hand, it's very clear, you never heard about this verse ever before in your life. Why? Because you don't speak Arabic. Why? Because you claim to be a scholar in Islam. But you have no idea about Islam. So now, this is your verse, the one you mentioned to me. I want you to read it with the explanation. And this is Al-Jalalain in English. So you have no excuse. Secondly, I will give you right now the same chapter we, was, we were talking about. In English. And you have to read it. Because you keep running from reading it. You have to read it. And I will force you to read it. And don't tell me you are not my white man. A white woman is a lot better than a Muslim woman. And we can prove that. A white woman in the West or a black woman in the West, you cannot compare them to a Muslim woman. Who they change their husbands like shoes. Now read for me. The verse in the front of you. Go ahead. You know, a Christian Prince, you're going to have to read your own verses here, okay? The problem is, I think you're having a hard time reading <laughs> and talking at the microphone, so you're saying, aha, you read it, Nadir. <laughs> okay, you got to learn to multitask on that computer, okay? I think that's the problem here. You're like, you don't want to come up to like, hold on a second, uh, Nadir, can you give me five minutes? I'll give you the time. I'll give you all the time you need. If you need to read something, we can pause and you can read it, okay? I'm not going to sit here and take, um, be dictated to you. Read this. Stand up, sit down, give me a break. You're just show, you're just exposing what a nutcase you are. Okay? Don't ask for peace. This is in your Quran. <laughs> you don't even speak Arabic. You don't even know about this verse, right? Well, actually, uh, if you saw the debate, is Islam a religion of peace? We talked about this verse. Okay, so... Um, and you said that I claim to be a scholar in Islam. I challenge you right now. I challenge you right now. Where show your proof where I said I'm a scholar in Islam. You've been saying this for I don't know how long, and tonight I gotta expose you. I challenge you right now. Show me the evidence where I said I'm a scholar in Islam. Okay? I mean, now let's go back to the verse about don't ask for peace when you get the upper hand. Okay, still, fine, don't ask for peace when you get the upper hand. But that doesn't mean you can commit an act of terrorism. That has nothing to do with terrorism. Do you see how Christian Prince is dancing around the issue of terrorism? First, he tried to take us to about a kid, who a person who had a prophecy that he's going to do something evil when he grows up, into trying to trick us that that's somehow, some, somehow uh, hey, no cursing Christian Prince in this room. Somehow, um, that is uh, terrorism. Now, he tries to trick us again by saying, don't ask for peace. Somehow, that's going to... That's going to uh, be related to terrorism. No, it doesn't. It's just talking about when you're in battle and you got the upper hand, don't ask for peace. It doesn't talk any about terrorism. Go ahead. Guys, when I gave you the verse, he, he is the one who mentioned it. Verse num number 91. This is his verse, and still he didn't want to read it. I gave you a Jalalain. This is your verse, you will read it. Secondly, now you said you cannot read Arabic. You have no excuse. And still you will not read. Do you know why? Because you are a coward. This is a Jalalain. I want everybody in the room to open it. And you will see the following. He slew him by slitting his throat with a knife while he lay down by treating his head off with his hand and by smashing his head against the wall. Do you see it? Don't tell me now you don't see it. Don't tell me now you don't speak Arabic. You accuse me to be a liar. This is your Islamic website, and this is a Jalalain book. Now, who is the liar? Do you see it, Nadir Ahmad? I am sure you will not read it. You know why? Because you're ashamed. So, guys, in here we will see the following. Not only he killed the little kid, he is playing with his body. A prophet of God, cutting his throat of a little kid, smashing his head with the wall, cutting with his knife meat from his body, 
and he didn't want to read it. Do you see now why he will not read it? So now Nadir Ahmed in the front of the room. Why you did lie to us saying that this is not a true story and it's not exist? Say in the front of everybody in the room that you are Allah and apologize for calling me a liar for telling this story. We are recording you by video. You cannot deny that you said that. To me. And this is the proof in the front of you. This is your Islamic website and I gave you the text. Read. I challenge you to read. Okay, you need to pay attention when I give when I tell you something. I said you are a liar when you claimed that I that I claim that I am a, a scholar in Islam. Where is this evidence? You've been saying this for I don't know how long. I want you to show your evidence. Okay, as for the story, you didn't show any reference for this for the story that you're bringing up. Okay, but this it doesn't matter because this doesn't tell us anything about the killing of innocent civilians in wartime. What does it say about that? It says nothing. What Christian Prince is trying to do is that he's just trying to get what is known as a shock effect. He's trying to shock you because he cannot show you from the text of the Quran where it teaches genocide, the mass extermination of men, women, and children. He cannot show you where it teaches to kill innocent civilians. You know, like going to a village and, you know, just killing people randomly. He can't show you that in the Quran. Okay? So, to compensate for that deficit, he's just talking about this innocent boy who was killed in a brutal manner, which he showed no reference for, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Okay, we've been doing this for one hour. I've given you enough time to uh, talk about the Quran. Okay, now, Christian Prince, don't run from me. Don't run from me. We're going to talk about terrorism and genocide in the Bible. Okay, now let's compare the 491 spot check with what we find inside what your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I'll refrain from the word Hitler or anything derogatory. Okay, and let's see what it let's see what it says over there. 30 seconds left, are you sure? I thought I'm done right now, but anyways, uh, go ahead, Christian Prince. Nader Ahmed, I accuse you to be a coward because until now you did not answer me. And when you said to me, you are a liar, this is long time before I say if you are a scholar or not. You said to me, I have a recorded, I will, I will show it in the video. I'm recording your video now. You called me a liar when I said to you that the Prophet Al-Khadr, he killed that kid, he slaughtered him, and he cut his head, and he was smashing his head with the wall. You called me a liar. And when I post to you the hadith and the tafsir from Saudi website, you said, he see, he is posting to me in Arabic. I accuse you to be a coward because even in English you don't want to read it. I gave it to you in Arabic, you don't want to read it. I gave it to you in English, you don't want to read it. And each time I give you a proof, you say to me, you don't tell me what to read. I'm not your white woman. Let me tell you something, maybe you are my black woman. Are you happy now? But still you are a woman. Otherwise, read it. You have no courage. Secondly, I gave you the verse, the one you are mentioning. It's in the front of your eyes. This is the verse you mentioned, I challenge you to read it. It says the opposite of what you are saying. This is a verse proving me right. This is the verse you choose. It says, don't ever give security for people who ask you for it. For people who want to have peace with you. Because they are going to do fitna. Which means Islam prefer killing. Those who ask for security with Islam. To have peace with Islam. This is the verse you choose, and I change you to read, but you will not read. Do you know why? Because you are my woman. Otherwise, read. I challenge you, Nadar Ahmed. You have two chapters now to read. The one you mentioned, and the one I mentioned. If you have the courage, read it. Go ahead. Okay, you need to pay attention again, alright? What I call, what I accused, I never accused you of being a liar of killing the kid, uh, the child kid there. I never said that was a lie. You can go ahead and uh, you could, uh, <clears throat> you could play that tape again. I said you're a liar because you said that I claim to be a scholar. All right. Now, as far, now you're finally getting somewhere what I want out of you. 
Okay, you're. Qu I'm, I already told you. I'm not going to sit here and you tell me to read a verse and I'm supposed to read it. No, you read the verse. Okay, but the problem is <laughs> you can't come to the mic and read the verse at the same time. You're not. You can't multitask. Okay. So, anyways, listen, Christian Prince. I think you were really getting to somewhere. You were. If I, you didn't give me an exact quotation, but you were talking about a verse which talked about if they don't, um, if people, something about security, don't offer them security, kill them all, or something of that nature. I think you're getting to what I'm looking at. Come to the microphone, Christian Prince, and tell me what exactly you're talking about. Okay? So, you can go ahead and stop crying and whining why I'm, why, when you dictate to me why I'm not going to follow your directions. Okay? It's, it's, Okay, that it doesn't. Um, you know, you got to stop crying about that. Okay, you got to learn how to multitask at the microphone. Okay, you don't sit here and tell people you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. That just shows how rude and obnoxious you are. Okay, but anyways, um, you had an interesting point about where you're trying to show some terrorism in the Quran. Please share that with us. Go ahead. You coward! You did not read. You took your time, you did not read. I want to give you my time. And again, this is the chapter in front of you. And you will see all of you guys, he will not read. Oh, we will not move one second from here until you read. I want to show everyone how coward you are. You have no excuse, you speak English. And your English better than mine. Why you don't want to read? Read for us how your prophet of Islam, he tortured a little boy for nothing. And I gave you the verse number 80. You did not read it too. It's in English. Your God saying it clearly, we fear he will. Which means he's not sure. Which means he did not, and he will not maybe. Because he is fearing maybe he will. You will not read it. Nadir Ahmed. Because you are the same as your prophet. You do not know what you are saying. Everybody in the room is my witness. And when we do pause the video in YouTube, everybody will see him calling me a liar when I say this prophet, he cut the throat of this kid and he smashed his head. And everybody will laugh at you because now you are taking back your words. Now I want to give you whatever left of my time and I challenge you again to read. Guys, do you think he will read? Give me one if you think he will read. Give me two if you think he will not. He will not? You think he's a coward? No, he will read. You will see, he is the man. Read for us, Nader Ahmed. Ahmed. Silence. Your mic. Alright, Christian Prince cannot refute chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran. And he's right, I'm not going to read it. Because you see, he's so used to pushing people around at the microphone. You read! Go ahead, read! Read! Yeah, I'm not going to read it. You read it. The problem is, you can't talk and read at the microphone. <laughs> so you can keep barking. Come on, come, come up to the mic and say, you read, you read. But the whole story of kids there, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know is a diversion from the topic of terrorism. You see, Christian prince cannot find terrorism in the Quran. He can't find it. Okay, and so because of that, he is trying to uh, divert your attention into the story, which really is quite irrelevant to what we're looking for. All right. So anyways, now that it's been proven that the Quran condemns terrorism, the Muslim on the battlefield, he must perform the 491 spot check. Now let's go to the Bible. Okay. So please don't come back to the microphone and say, read, read, because I'm not going to read. I already said no. No means no. And you have to, you have to respect that. If someone's not going to read your text and listen to your dictates, okay, you have to accept that Christian prince. All right, I know it might hurt your ego. How dare you oppose me? I am Christian Prince. Who are you to say no to me? <laughs> yeah, someone's saying no to you, all right? Okay, anyway, so let's go back. Now let's see what the Bible says about the issue of terrorism. Okay, now Christian Prince believes Jesus is God. And therefore, if he's God, he is a God of the Old Testament as well, right? He pre-existed. So when you ask a Christian... Who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Old Testament? It's God-inspired words. And who is God? Jesus Christ, as well as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay, that's very important to understand for where I'm about to take you, because now we're going to look for terrorism in the Bible and see what Jesus says about it, and we're going to compare it with the Quran. 
and we're, that's when we're going to prove who is a true prophet, which is going to be the grand finale of tonight's debate, because it's going to, we're going to see. Okay, my time's up. We're going to see who is a true prophet. Go ahead. <laughs> Nader, you deserve the name Betato in the top of your head. I ask you even to read the verse, the one you gave me, you coward, and you will not read it. It's your verse. You potato, you asked me, and you gave me a verse for 91. Still, you don't want to read it. It is you who have a problem with reading your verse even. Is it you who gave me this verse? I challenge you even to read your verse. This is your verse, Nader Ahmad. I want to expose your Quran from your verse. This verse you gave me, proving my point, that Islam is a religion of terrorism. Look at you, how coward you are. You don't want to, want to read the verse I gave you with English. I gave it to you in Arabic, you didn't speak Arabic. Excuse. English, you don't want to read it. Now, this is your verse. I want you to read to the room, and let us, all of us, laugh at your God, Allah, and His rules in the Quran. What kind of God, he say, you will find people who they are desiring security from you, desire peace from you. Don't give it to them. Kill them. Kill them wherever you find them. Take them as slaves. Don't ever have peace with them. This is your verse. And this is your explanation. And you will read it. You like it or not. You have to. I'm not going to give you a chance to run. Terrorism in your Quran is big time in the verse you choose. Guys, be my witness. This is a verse he chose, and he is ashamed of reading it. Read for me. Ahmed. Why don't you read? Uh, for chapter 4 verse 91 <clears throat> excuse me yeah I read that I think I read it about three four times so I don't know what you're talking about okay so my verse I've actually read quite often here and you're running from that but as far as this verse which Christian Prince was talking about that you will find people who wish to have security from you and blah 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 you know kill him take him his sleeves and all that kind of stuff honestly there's no verse like that in the Quran where it just talks about indiscriminate killing he didn't get, that's not what chapter 4 verse 91 says. Why don't you quote a verse and you read it, okay? Problem is, I think, um, you know, Christian Prince, he's kind of a pushy person. When someone disobeys his commands, you know, this he, he just can't handle it. You know, someone tell him, no, listen, you read it. He just can't handle that. But anyway, he's just exposing, I think, what a moron he is. But anyways, the, what we need to focus on tonight I don't want to go and go off in a tangent and start talking about slavery. That has nothing to do with tonight's topic. Uh, we're talking about genocide and the mass extermination of men, women, and children and the issues of terrorism. That's what we're talking about, okay? So, now, where is a verse you are talking about, Christian Prince, which talks about what you were sort of paraphrasing? You didn't quote, you paraphrased. You quote the verse and you read it and let's take a look at it. Go ahead, Christian Prince. Don't ask others to go read it because you... You can't multitask at the computer. Go ahead. <laughs> I am multitask like you're a prophet. In the same time, when I have sex with my wife, the angels speak to me and give me verses from the Quran. Right? Yeah. All right, Christian Prince, that's a violation of the debate. There's no mocking these religions and talking. This is a G-rated room, okay? And you're going to get us bounced over here. So you need to answer the questions, okay? And not and obviously you're getting frustrated. And that's why you, that's why you started to bring up sex. That's seriously. Whenever a Christian prince gets frustrated, he brings up sex. All right? So you need to show some respect to the subject being debated. And now stick to the topic. Where is the verse that which, which teaches terrorism in the Quran? Thank you very much. So whoever mentions sex, it means he is frustrated. This is explained why your God, Allah, is promising nothing in the Quran except sex. Now, the verse you gave me, it's very clear. This is the verse you gave me. What's wrong with you? People, they are asking you for peace. Allah saying, don't give them peace. They are not asking you for war. Allah saying, this is mischievement. Don't ever do that. If you do give them peace, this is a sin in Islam. Kill them, wherever you find them. 
Take them as slaves if you, if you don't want to kill them. This is the verse you gave me, potato, and you are scared and ashamed to read it. And regarding terrorism in Islam, the Quran is full of the word terrorism. You can go to Surah 3 verse 151. I will install terror in the heart of the believer. Surah 8 12. I will put terror in the heart of the believer. So beat them, cut their throat, cut their fingers. Surah 33 verse 26. The same. I will put terror in the heart of the Christians and the Jew. Surah 59 verse number 2. I will install terror in the heart of those who oppose me. But now we want to go back to the topic, your verse. I challenge you to read it. And I use it to be a coward to read it. Your mind. Yeah, let's go ahead and read chapter 4, verse 91. Let's see if it says what Christian Prince just explained what it said. Let's see if it really says that. <clears throat> it, says, it says, You will find others that wish to have security from you and security from their own people. Okay? It doesn't say anything. If Don't offer them peace. It doesn't say anything like that. Look how he inserted that nonsense into the verse. But anyways, let's keep reading. Every time they are sent back to temptation, they yield thereto. Now, here's the very important part. If they withdraw not from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, take a hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. Okay? If they do not fit these criteria. So the Quran limits who you can kill and who you cannot. Meaning, the person who is not offering you peace, the person who is not restraining their hands from you, and the person who um, is lining up and they're ready to attack you, you have a clear warrant to, to, uh, you have a clear warrant to kill them. Let's keep reading here. It says, In their case, we have provided you with a clear warrant against them. So, if you were to apply chapter 4, verse 91 on the battlefield, there's no way you could kill any innocent civilians because all innocent civilians are excluded from chapter 4, verse 91. He talked about the verse, the word terror is all over the Quran. You bet. You bet. Okay? But the context of the word terror was never to kill innocent civilians. It was to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, which is a very, very important concept. Okay? And that actually is a very peaceful concept because when you strike fear into the hearts of the enemy, they're not going to want to fight. All right? But the context of the word terror was never to kill innocent civilians or to commit acts of terrorism like strapping a bomb to yourself or something like that. That's not the context. And you said, go and cut their fingers? You are a liar. It never gave this Amr. You are lying, Christian Prince. And I challenge you to post the verse right now. Go ahead. Oh, I am a liar? Okay. So, doesn't say that. If I show that in the front of the room, you have to apologize and you have to say to a whole room that you are the one is a liar. This is chapter 8, verse number 12. In the front of your eyes. And this is your translation. Read for me what their fingertips mean. Guys, all of you heard him saying that this is a lie, it's not in the Quran. Chapter 8, verse number 12. I will make everybody laugh at you, Nader Ahmed. We are recording your voice by video too. No fingertips in the Quran? Is that right? Do you see it? It's in the front of your eyes. Chapter 8, verse number 12. So this is number one we expose you with. After many we did already. Secondly, the verse you are talking about, the one you are mentioning, your Quran, no, and don't, you, know, you have no right to bounce anyone. Nader Ahmed. Get that name back. Get that name back. That name did not do anything bad. I will stop until you get the name back. Take the mic. You have no right to bounce my guests. They are coming because of me. Get that name back. Take the mic. All right. Uh, your friend is uh, using really filthy language like words. I mean, he should not be talking about sodomy in this debate. Let's keep this thing G-rated, okay? I'll go ahead and remove the bounce, and you can go ahead and invite him back. But you got to tell your friends uh, to stop acting perverted. Okay, go ahead. Not use a bad, even if this is not a debate. 
You know, as long they did not use a bad language, you have no right to bounce anyone. Now you say that this verse doesn't say, there is no verse in the Quran that says, cut their fingers. Come to the mic, I showed you the proof. Say to me, I am sorry Christian Prince, I am in here to learn from you about Islam, and it is says that. Chapter 8, verse number 12. Why did lie say there is no verse in the Quran say that to your mind? I want everyone to see how Christian Prince twists the ayat of the Quran. Remember what I said. He said, go and cut their fingers off as if we as Muslims, we were ordered to go and cut people's fingers uh, tips off. And I said, this did not come as an Amr. Now let's read the verse. It says, remember, <clears throat> chapter 8, verse one, uh, 12. Remember, your Lord inspired the angels. This was said to the angels. Verily I am with you, so keep firm. Uh, those who have believed I will cast terror into the hearts of those who have disbelieved so strike them over their necks and smite them um, all um, all over their fingers and toes this was said to the angels Christian Prince so but you distorted this verse and you said this was referring to that this was an armor for us to go out and, and do that or for the for a command for human beings to go out and do that so this is shows you how you twist the verses of the Quran but anyways I've whipped chapter 4 verse 91 like a dead horse. There's no way. Um, okay, look, uh, Christian Prince, I'm going to put... Uh, your your friends in here are cursing you, or they're cursing, uh, you know, saying terrible things in the text here. There's no room for, the, room for that, so I hope you don't mind if I red dot these people. Okay, so anyways, now that we have said that, now Christian Prince, you know, because it is, what, like 1.30? I think we've been doing this for an hour and a half. Because I know, you know you don't like talking about the Bible and the genocide and terror in the Bible so I wanted to make sure that we talked about Islam good enough so now we gotta switch our focus to the Bible okay now let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3 over there 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3 okay now I'm gonna try to I'm, now I'm gonna try to post the verse over there it says go and smite Amalek kill all men women and children Okay, and even the babies. It says, Jesus says to kill the babies. And why do I say Jesus? Because Jesus is God, and God wrote the Bible, right? Go ahead, Christian Prince. Thank you. You said first, the chapter you mentioned, it is about saying that to the angels. I will show everybody in the room that you are the last one who know his religion. This is the chapter in English with the explanation of Ibn Abbas one of the best scholars of Islam your God Allah saying inspired to the angels to say to Muhammad that I will be with you in the war so you can kill and cut the heads of everyone and cut their fingers so it's not for the angels they will do that this is showing you how much ignorant you are in your religion Mr. Nadir Ahmed open with me and read this is Ibn Abbas explanation not my explanation I am with you I will help you so make those believers stand firm in war so it was a message to the believers the Muslims not to the angels the angels the one is delivering the message to your prophet it sounds like you forgot who is the one is giving the Quran to Muhammad so go and cut their hair you know cut their heads and cut their fingers so next time don't say this is for the angels not for the believers I will give you the mic to answer me and tell me did you learn something or not yet did you learn neither you will not read it right and I'm sure you will not because everybody in here heard you saying that this is an order to the angels thank you Take the mic. Yeah, I sure did learn something. I learned you cannot read English and uh, type and, and speak at the microphone. Okay, you... <laughs> it's exactly what I told it. Let's, let me read this for you, okay, Christian Prince? Now listen carefully. Listen carefully for me, all right? It says, when your Lord inspired the angels, it also means that... It also means that... The, it, I'm sorry, it also said that this means... When your Lord commanded the angels, saying, I am with you, 
I will help you. So make those who believe stand firm in war. And it is also said that it means give those who believe the good news of a victory. I will throw cast fear into the hearts um, of those who disbelieve and fear and fear of Muhammad and his companions. So that actually proves disproves what you are saying. I showed you that terror does not mean an act of terrorism in the Quran. It talks about putting fear into the hearts of your enemy. All right. So Christian Prince, you need to read carefully. It says over here. Let me read it for you again. <clears throat> when your Lord inspired the angels, it is also said that this means. When your Lord commanded the angels, saying, I am with you, I will help you. The Lord commanded the angels. The Lord commanded the angels. Did you see that? All right. So it's also now, this is a big deception which has been exposed. Because the liars on these hate rooms and pal talk, when you see the word terror, they say this means terrorism, like September 11th. But according to the hadith which Christian Prince gave us, and thank you for that, it says over here that the terror is, that terror cast terror into the hearts of the infidels, meaning fear from Muhammad. You'll put fear into their hearts. Okay. Now, having said that, let's go back to First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse three. And you got to answer the thing about the Bible. So here we see a clear, a clear injunction by Jesus Christ. Okay, for mass extermination of all innocent civilians, which is exactly which is genocide. We find genocide in your book. Go ahead, the mic is yours. Everybody is laughing at you. First, when you mention a verse in the Bible, you yourself, I can show you the verse in the Quran saying that it's been older to Moses to follow the law eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. So the Jewish was practicing that in their enemies. The one who attacked them, who killed, killed their women, killed their children, they were doing that to them. Simply clear. And your God approved that. Secondly, you did not read for me what I asked you to do. You know why? Because you don't have multitask like your prophet. Why you did not read? You said to me that this is an order to the angels. To do what? The angels was fighting in the war or the Muslims? And who is the one is getting the fingers? It is the angels of Islam or the Muslims? The verse is very clear. Allah saying, I inspire the angels to tell you I will be standing stand firm don't don't be a worry I will install terror and the funny another Ahmad he said to us terror is not fear it's not terrorism fear is not terror is not, is not, is not terrorism so what is terrorism terrorism simply is making people scared this is what terrorism you attack civilian you scare the hell of them then they submit to Allah. This is what terrorism. You're a prophet, he said, but no sir to be robbed. I've been given victory by terrorism. I was given victory by terrorism. So what terrorism is scaring your enemy? They give their weapon down right away and they say we are Muslims. This is why you're a prophet, he said, I've been ordered to fight and kill all people until they do the prayer and they pay me the money and they say no prophet but me and no God but Allah and then and only then only then they will stop me from shedding their blood this is what terrorism is okay let's see what he said that terrorism is making people scared <laughs> No, terrorism is, a, is indiscriminate killing of innocent men, women, and children. Okay? That's what terrorism is. We see terrorism inside the Bible. Jesus Christ himself, which I don't believe that's a Jesus of the Bible. I don't believe that's really him, but since Christian Prince believes that, he has to accept that. Okay? So your version of Jesus, he basically ordered the complete mass extermination of all men, women, and children. And it had nothing to do with eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth, okay? Because babies don't do anything wrong. But First Samuel chapter 15, verse 3 says, kill the babies. Now, I will show you where Christians are. It's not that the Christians are commanded to do this. The Bible doesn't say you have to do it, but it's, a recommend, it's recommended. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3.16. 
2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration unto God and is profitable. So all scripture is profitable. So when you look at the genocide command of chapter 15, Samuel 15 verse 3, okay, it's saying that's something which is profitable. For, for doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. So my challenge for you, Christian Prince, tonight, which one of these four categories in 2 Timothy 3.16 does the genocide of fifth of first of uh let's see Samuel 15 where does that fall in is this your doctrine is this your reproof corrections or instructions unto righteousness okay now let's go to the uh hadith which you are quoting about that I have been ordered to fight them until okay I have been ordered to fight them until so what we're seeing here what this uh what this particular hadith is talking about this is talking about when to st when to stop fighting it doesn't say, okay, you should go and start a fight uh, because people are, are disbelievers. It doesn't say that. But anyways, that is, has nothing to do with terrorism. That talks about when, to, when, to, uh, when you should stop fighting a war. Nothing about terrorism. Go ahead. When you should stop the war, it means you have to be always in war until they pay you the money, until they convert to Islam, until they say Muhammad is a prophet. This is terrorism. Which means in Islam, you are not allowed to have peace unless all people convert to Islam. You just say that from your mouth. So, if you don't pay me the money, if you don't convert to Islam, this is my condition. I will not stop killing you until you pay me the money. Your prophet is about money, by the way. Because I can stay as an infidel if I give him money. He worship money. There's two things your prophet you worship, sex and money. And now I will give you something in English, and you will not read, not in Arabic, so you have no excuse. In Surah 9:29, your prophet is teaching Muslims how to do terrorism in Christians who they are living with them. Christians who they are not in war with them. Your next door Christian, your neighbor, how to humiliate him, how to insult him, how to torture him, how to install terror in his heart. How? Don't ever be nice to the Christian. When you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, humiliate him, insult him. And Muslims are not allowed to honor people of Dhimma, which means the Christian and the Jew. Why? Because Muhammad want to practice terrorism in those Christians. And if they try to complain, what the, what the solution? You kill them. If you refuse to pay the money, I will kill you. And this is the proof in front of everyone. And I challenge you to read it for, for us, Mr. Nader Ahmed. I love chapter 9, verse 29. It is my favorite verse. Okay? Chapter 9, verse 29. But let me first address some of your things. Now, Christian Prince, you got to start addressing the Bible. Okay, we did enough of the Quran, and we're going to, pretty soon, this is going to grind down to where we got to talk about the Bible. You're not going to run from me. All right, we've done, I don't know, how long is this? Let me look how long we've been debating for. Holy cow, an hour and 22 minutes on the Quran, and we have found no terrorism, okay? We're done with the Quran. Right after this 929 verse, we're done with the Quran, and then we're going to talk about the Bible. Okay, Christian Prince, out of fairness. Okay, this is because I got to go to bed <laughs> after a while. I actually have to wake up in the morning. I got to go to work. But you lured me into this debate. I couldn't. I couldn't refuse. So yeah, in Islam it says, you know, if you looked at that hadith, it says, fight them until they either convert to Islam or pay the jizya. Your prophet liked money. Do you know why he liked money? Because he used this for the for this was taxes. The Muslims had to pay taxes because he was the governor. He was the ruler of the country. Just like George Bush likes money, and every president likes money, right? They need taxes from the people. But the jizya is not supposed to be given to overburden the person. But tonight's debate is not about the jizya payment, okay? It's not about jizya. All right, this is talking about terrorism. And as you can see, Christian Prince is all over the place here. But chapter 9, verse 29, i got to talk about that. Because chapter 9, verse 29, these were marching orders, and Christian Prince was right that they ordered to fight against the Christians inside chapter 9, verse 29. Okay? 
But why was it so important to fight against the Christians? Because the born-again Christians, they were committing mass genocide against the Jewish people. Let's go to the Jewish Virtual Library. I want you to read here. Had it not been for no chapter 9, verse 29, then all of the Jewish race would have been exterminated. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saved the Jews from the genocide of the false Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, because of 929. First, uh, Nader Ahmed, don't tell me you want to go to sleep. You know, uh, come on, we are having fun. If you run, really, you are running, big time. I change you to stay for the coming two hours. Now, this is your Islamic scholar, and this is your prophet saying, that being, paying the jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace is not a tax. Do you see it? Why you are lying about tax? This is not a tax. Because this is a sign of this, you know, kufr and disgrace. This is an insult. This is a humiliation. Secondly, I want you to read why your prophet want the Muslims to humiliate those who they are paying their tax. Why you have to get humiliated when you pay tax? Do Americans humiliate you each time, each year you pay your tax because you are a Muslim? Do they slam your cheek? Do they spit in your face? Did the American make a law says don't ever honor a Muslim? Do the American say if you see a Muslim in the street, force him to the most narrow road? Your prophet is an ugly man. And this is his words. I challenge you to read it. And guys, how many times each time I give him a proof from his own book, he refused to read it. About my book, I said it clearly what is my book is about. Your God in the Quran, he ordered the Jewish and he promised them to the, the land and he told them to go and take it from those who own the land. And I can show you the verse from the Quran. I know that you do not know your Quran. I can show you right now, right here, that your God Allah is the one who told them to go and take the land from the one who own it. How they can take it? By war. This is an order in your book. But now I want you to read for me this. And I challenge you before you run, Nader Ahmed. Okay, this is all off topic about humiliation and paying the jizya and the taxes and why humiliate. All of this is off topic. We got to deal with 929 and then we got to jump into the Bible, okay? It's been an hour and a half on this topic. Stop. <laughs> I think a Christian Prince is trying to avoid that from happening. He wants, he's stalling, basically. Okay, chapter 9, verse 29. It talks about fight those against those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor forbid um, that which has been forbidden by Allah. And when this verse was revealed, then the Muslims marched against the Christians. But who were the Christians? It was against the Christian Emperor Heraclius. And what were these Christians known for? At this time, these born-again Christians were committing mass genocide against the Jews. The born-again Christians, after reading the Bible, came to the conclusion that all Jews must be exterminated or be forced into Christianity. And had it not been for Muhammad's intervention, then all of the Jews would have been exterminated. And that's why we say Islam is a religion of peace. And why we say Islam is a religion of truth. Because Islam came to confront and condemn the genocide and the terrorism of biblical Christianity. Now let me give you a historical link from the Jewish library where they confirm that it was, if it was not for jihad in Islam, if it was not for the war passages that we've been talking about, all the Jews would have been exterminated. Look what it says here. In the Jewish virtual library, it talked about that the Jews are being exterminated. And look what the historian says here. It looked like the end of Judaism in Judea. However, things were going on in the Arabian desert, which within seven years would change the picture of the Near East and of the whole world. And that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with chapter 9, verse 29. Had it not been for Muhammad, all the Jews would have been exterminated. And don't waste our time by talking about Banu Kareza, Banu Kaneka, Banu Nadir. Deal with 929, uh, Christian Prince. Don't divert us. You are asking me to deal with it? You are, no, you are the one who took the mic. You are not dealing with it. 
You are asking me to deal with it? Guys, he's asking me to deal with it. Each time I take the mic, I ask him to read it, he don't read it. Secondly, your prophet is the one who said, in his Quran, the most people who they are your enemy is the one who said we are a Jew. And you are telling me, your, you know, your prophet is saving the Jew? You must be kidding me. Is it your Quran? Say that the most who hate you, the most you should hate, the most of your enemy is the one who called himself is a Jew? Suddenly Muslims now, they love the Jew? I'm really shocked. Surprise, surprise. Is it your prophet the one who said that time will come and if a Jew hide behind a tree or a rock, the tree and the rock will scream and say, there is a Jewish behind him, behind me, come and kill him? Is that a lie too? Now the Muslims, they are protecting the Jew. Is it your Quran who said that the Jewish are the pigs and the monkeys? And now he loved the Jew. And now I will give you the link again. In the front of the room, I challenge you to read. Why you want to insult your neighbor next door? This is not about the Roman liar because even that verse is about the Jew read it the people of the book is not only the Christians it is the Jewish and the Christian so if you say this is to save the Jew why you are forcing the Jew to do that you see how you lie Mr. Nader this is a verse about the Jewish and the Christian now it's your turn to read and I challenge you you will not read watch guys Okay, all off topic. Insulting the neighbor next door has nothing to do with terrorism. But I mean, all these issues we can refute and throw in the trash, but we got to stay on topic here about terrorism. Now, notice how scared Christian princes got. This is this has not only been confirmed by Islamic history, but even by the Jewish historians themselves. Had it not been for a Christian prince made the devastating mistake of quoting chapter 9, verse 29. Okay, because that verse saved the Jews from the mass genocide of the born again Christians. All right, so what did he do? He got scared. He says, Most your enemy is the Jew. The Quran teaches it. So he's redirecting our attention away from a historical fact into some other issue. The time will come if the Jew is hiding behind me. So that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Your Jew, your Quran said they're pigs and monkeys. That has nothing to do with the historical fact that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saved the Jews from the genocide of Jesus Christ. But your your insult your, your pigs and monkeys insult the neighbors next door. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Okay? And that's why we say that Islam is a religion of peace. Okay? And now let's and so basically had it not been for Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then all of the Jews would have been exterminated by the Christians and that's what the that's what the Jewish virtual library uh, states itself and this is an Israeli website folks ladies and gentlemen let's look at this website again it is a, uh, a division of the American Israeli cooperative enterprise and look what they uh, confess it said it looked like the end of Judaism in Judea because the born-again Christians were exterminating them however things were going on in the Arabian desert which within seven years would change the picture of the Near East and of the whole world. And that is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Christian Prince, he is running away from this historical fact. He's going to talk about everything else but this. Go ahead. It's Everybody is witnessing Nader Ahmad. And the good thing we have this in video. And soon everybody will be laughing. You will never read it. Secondly, Islam is encouraging killing of everyone. Because in Islam, everyone is not an innocent. As long you are talking about killing Jew, huh? as long you are saying, uh, uh, let, let us see the side of the Jew. Let us see the interview of the BBC, which your scholar, one of the biggest scholars of Islam in London, saying who is the one is the innocent man in Islam. I just wonder why you won't condemn it when your own leader, Omar Bakri, said quite simply, I condemn the killing of innocent people on the 20th of July. Yeah, why won't you say what he said? Look, at the, at the end of the day, innocent people, when we say innocent people, we mean Muslims. 
as far as uh, non-Muslims are concerned, they have uh, they have not accepted Islam. As far as we are concerned, that is a crime against God. I want but, to be clear uh, about what you're saying. As, as this as is as very important. You're no, saying only Muslims can count as innocent people. Well, as far as Muslims are concerned, you're innocent if you if you are a Muslim. Then you're innocent in the eyes of God. If you are non-Muslim, then you're guilty of not believing in God. Yes, there were many victims. You're guilty. They're, guilty. They're, they're guilty are you of seriously not believing. suggesting that everybody on those tube trains and on that bus in London on July the 7th was in some way a legit? Did you hear it? In Islam, killing an innocent people is anyone who is a Muslim is an innocent man. If you are not a Muslim, it means we can kill all people. Only Muslims are innocent in Islam. So you will lie to who Nader Ahmed saying that you know what Islam don't kill innocent people. He asked him why you don't condemn the killing of those people in the train. They are women, kids. He said because they are not Muslims. In Islam, innocent only is the Muslims. Did you hear it? I'm sure you did not. And now read for me again and you will not read. Your mind. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? <laughs> I quoted you a historical fact. Christian Prince, he is not able to refute it, so all he's doing is that he's just basically redirecting our attention to some other unpleasant fact. Okay? You quoted a guy who did not quote a single passage from the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 91 refutes that clown. Okay? So, please don't waste our time. Okay? Anyways... Chapter 4, verse uh, 91, the, the 491 spot check uh, deals with him. He didn't quote any scripture. He didn't quote any hadith or anything like that. And Christian Prince is just trying to trick us here. Okay, He's, this is another shock effect. Okay, he said, your scholar said this. You know, even he doesn't claim to be a scholar. But Christian Prince is basically trying to give him, um, I mean, uh, trying to give him undue importance there. Okay, so the whole thing about nobody innocent in Islam, that was refuted by 491, and we went over that. Let's talk about the genocide of the born-again Christians were doing against the Jews. Again, had it not been for Muhammad's intervention, all of the Jews would have been completely exterminated off the face of the planet, and the Jewish virtual library um, concedes to that. So every Jew should kiss the feet of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu because he saved the Jews from the genocide of the born-again Christians. Now that you understand that, now let's go ahead and read chapter 22, chapter 21 verse uh, 40. Now you'll be able to understand that. It says, look at, look at what it says here, because this talks about why we find jihad in the Quran. Now that you understand the historical context, look what it says over here. It says, for had it not been that Allah checks one set of people by means of another. Okay? So you got these two groups of people and fighting. God raises up the jihadists from Arabia. Why is this jihad there? Allah tell, gives you the answer. Had it not been that Allah checks one set of people by means of another. Monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques, wherein the name of God is mentioned, much surely would have been pulled down. And who was doing that? The born-again Christians uh, were doing that to the Jews. I'm sorry, my time is up. First of all, any Christian he killed, anyone, he is not doing what Jesus Christ he told him to do. Those people, they have no permission to kill a Jew or to kill Christians. And you will see in the history, some Christians was killing even Christians. And this is not a Christian teaching and they have nothing to do with Christ. But in your religion, you're a prophet, he killed 900 Jews in one day. In one day, not in two days. And you are telling me you're a prophet, is saving the Jew? And the funny, each time I give you reference, you say to me, you did not give me reference. I just did. I just did. I gave you a hadith in English even about your prophet ordering to kill the Jewish and their kids. Outlaw, <coughs> if you can please pause the hadith again in English in the room. So this kid, he can read it for us. We gave it to you, your prophet ordering to kill the Jewish, the women. And I will show you another hadith. Your prophet ordering even to burn people alive. Open with me Sahih al-Bukhari. The book of a jihad was sayer. 
hadith number 2793 the prophet he sent us to burn people alive to burn etc and etc and etc names alive burn them alive and you are telling me your prophet is not doing terrorism I will show you a verse from the Quran your prophet putting nails in the eyes of those people nails in the eyes and you are telling me this is not terrorism when your prophet he killed the 900 Jew and he took their women as slaves this is not terrorism when your prophet he said clearly when you see a Jew kill him don't save him this land is for the Prophet Muhammad only and I will give you the hadith in a second your mind all right we're gonna start talking about the Bible now okay all of that crap I believe I refuted inside my in the debate is Islam a religion of peace and I'm kinda of surprised seeing it all being recycled again no that's not genocide that's not terrorism because if you read about Banu Kareza they begged the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to judge them according to the Torah they said we will have no other ruling than Deuteronomy chapter 20 that's the context of chapter 90 I'm sorry of, of the 900 Jews or 700 900 Jews the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said no please use the Islamic ruling but they said no we will use the ruling of the Torah okay and we'll get that from Ibn Hisak that reference and all the other things which he was mentioning let me see what I let me see what I got here I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden hold on okay you tell it's getting late here okay um, he said basically about the Jews um, and all this and blah 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 and honestly I just I just forgot but anyway that's not important because in none of that there's no such thing as terrorism oh burning of fire actually he's now trying to scare everybody okay basically he admits tonight yeah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did save the Jews from the genocide of Christianity but look at this over here it says burn them alive actually he never said that he said do not punish people by fire but that's gonna be another debate officially the topic of um, Islam is done now we're gonna go jump into the Bible okay now we did this for two hours Christian Prince let's be fair you had two hours to try to find terrorism. We'll let the audience decide whether you are successful or not. Okay. I showed you that actually, no, Christians can, and it's recommended for them to commit genocide. Because 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration unto God, and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. So in the 2 Timothy 3.16 test, where does the genocide of 1 Samuel 15 verse 3 fall in? Where does it fall in? Tell me right now. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, Nader Ahmed, you keep repeating even the same verses, and I did answer you over and over again. But you have no courage to read your Quran. And you are ashamed of your religion. It's very clear. When your prophet he killed all those Jewish Christian prince, out of fairness, uh, we've debated Islam for now two hours. All right. Now we're going to talk about the Bible. All right. Now I believe you've had over two hours to prove uh, terrorism in the Quran, and we've let the people listen to it and judge for themselves. Now, Christian prince, we got to focus our attention on the Bible now. All right, out of fairness. And we're not going to spend a long time. We'll just do, oh, I don't know what, 35 minutes? Not even that. Okay? And then we're going to call it a day. All right? So please, Christian Prince, answer to Timothy 3.16. The mic is yours. Nader Ahmed, I challenge you to pause the verse you are talking about in the front of the room, and I will make everybody in the room laugh at you. Secondly, uh, those verses you are talking about in the Bible they are supported by your Prophet Muhammad because according to your Quran it was your God Allah who gave authority for those Jewish to do whatever they need to do to take the land from those people who own the land and I can show you that from your Quran I understand you have no knowledge in your religion as all Muslim does so me and you we will open together the Quran and we will read how your God ordering the Jew
to go and take the land, whatever the price is, saying to them, this is your land. Don't ever give it back or turn your back from it. It was a promise from Allah to take that land, not by the Jew order by themselves. It was your God saying to them, this is a promise from me to you to go and take it and have it forever. Take it from who? I will read the explanation for you and you will see the explanation saying it clearly that this is a promise to take it from people who own the land already, which, which they are in your Quran, the Palestinian. Your God ordering people to do genocide against the Palestinian in the Quran. And everybody will see that. And I'm sure you never heard of this. I want you to open with me Surah 5 verse 20 and 21. And let us read together how your God ordering the Jew to kill everybody in that land and to take the land from the one who owned the land. Is that explaining to you those verses in the Bible? Your mic. Uh, Christian Prince, uh, the Quran is now irrelevant. Okay, when you look at your when you look at your book, you shouldn't have to refer to the Quran. All right, this is about what the Bible teaches. You spend all your time up here talking about the Quran. Now, as of right now, the Quran is irrelevant. Okay. Now you need to address 2 Timothy 3.16. Now I let you go on and I should have doubted you, okay, but that's a violation now. Please answer 2 Timothy 3.16. Where does a genocide fit in 2 Timothy 3.16? Go ahead. If you don't have good ears, this is your problem. I just gave you the answer from your Quran. Unless you reject your Quran, your God is giving the old order to the Jew. Your God is telling the Jew to do whatever they want. Not only that, he is saying to them, I made you kings. I gave you lands. I gave you what I never gave to anyone. Read the explanation. What does that mean? Allah, he gave victory until the time of Moses over all the enemies. And he allowed them to kill everyone who opposed them and to take the land from them. It's a must. It's a land of the Jew. And if you go there, you will see your God Allah even saying that the Jewish are the chosen people of Allah, not the Muslims. And then you will see your God Allah saying that the land of Israel, it was a gift from Allah to the Jew forever. And wherever the price is, those Jewish, they have to keep it. In the same time, if we open the explanation of this verse, you will see your God Allah explaining about wars the Jewish was entering and the prophets of the Jew was supported always by Allah ordering them to kill everyone who opposed the chosen people of Allah who they are the Jewish who they are the people of Moses so you are saying it clearly that your God Allah was a bad God for ordering the Jew to kill everybody who opposed them and this is your explanation in the front of your eyes and I know for sure you will not read it. And I will give it to you in Arabic, in English, in all languages you want. Because I am so sure you will not read it. You complain about the Bible when the same teaching was taken from there, put in your Quran. You have an answer? You don't. For the last time, Christian Prince, no more discussion on the Quran. Okay? This is not a topic on the Quran. We're now dealing with the Bible. All right. First of all, you know, I, I, this is the last time I'm going to address the Quran, and no more after this. In all of those passages, nowhere did it say that the Jews committed genocide and mass extermination against those people in the Quran. It doesn't say that. This, what Christian Prince tried to pull on us tonight, is something called a bait and switch. He baits you with a verse of the Quran. Look, it's talking about the Jewish wars. Come, come. So you take the bait. Yeah, the Quran is talking about the Jewish wars. And then right before you take the bait, he pulls the Bible in front of you. These are the wars. Wait a second. The Quran didn't say go and look in the Bible to learn about what were the details which, uh, which took place in the war. So basically, he, all right, so please, this is called the bait and switch. All right. But the Quran, we are going to put away. And I, and I let you go for that minute because I don't like red dotting you, Christian Prince. I like letting you talk. 
Now, this is not about what my book says, but now we have to talk about what your book says. Okay, you can't hide behind the Quran. Okay? You now need to address the issue tonight. 2 Timothy 3.16 again. Let's read it, folks. All scripture is given by inspiration unto God and is profitable. So, the genocide in the Old Testament, that's profitable. The 2 Timothy clearly says that. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for corrections and instructions unto righteousness. Here is how you do righteous behavior. All scripture falls into one of these four categories. So again, Christian Prince, which one of these four categories does a genocide of the Old Testament, which one of these four categories does it fit in? And any reference to the Quran is automatic red dot. Okay, this is the third time I'm warning you. No more talking about the Quran. The mic is yours. You have no right to tell me how to answer. This is a debate you cover. This is a debate. When I show you that this is, exists in your Quran, how you can complain about it? You see how coward you are? Because I can spend 10 hours saying to you about the Bible, you will say, you know what? The Bible is corrupted for me anyway. But when I show it to you from your Quran, you will give me a dot. Because this is will expose your religion. Because this is will expose how stupid you are when you complain about something exists in your Quran. And now, you have to read for me Nader Ahmed. Because I will make you in the front of everyone here reject Islam. Because you just reject something exists in your Quran. Your God Allah is giving the Holy Land for the Jewish and saying to them, go and fight and take it. How do you want to fight? Kill everybody. Read the explanation. And I will give you after that a different explanation. A lot more powerful. Showing you how Allah ordered the Jew to slaughter everybody. No exception. And this is in your book, according to your prophet Muhammad. And I know you will not read it. Do you know why? Because you are a Muslim. And the Muslim do not read. They are the same as their prophet. The first teacher in the history who want to teach us how to read and how to write, but he himself cannot read and write. Why? Because he's a Muslim. So, when the Bible says that, I have no problem with it. And it is in your Quran. If you have a problem with it, come to the mic and denounce and say, Announce! I reject Islam because Islam teaching the same as the Bible saying for the Jew. I challenge you. I, I can't force this guy to debate me on the Bible, okay? He obviously wants to um, keep debating the Quran, which shows, you know, he, he doesn't even know how to defend his own religion. I mean, Christian Prince, honestly, I don't need to say that you made a fool out of yourself in tonight's debate, but I think people see who you really are. Dude, you're a charlatan, alright? You want to attack other people's books, but you cannot even defend your own. But anyways, we are about to prove Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet of God. Okay, because this really is a difference between Islam and Christianity. Islam condemns terrorism and genocide. We saw that how Islam saved the Jews from the genocide of the born-again Christians. And how God said inside chapter 22, verse 40, that basically paraphrasing, had it not been for this jihad, mosques, temples, synagogues would have all been torn down. Christian Prince sees tonight, yes, there is clear genocide and mass terrorism inside the Quran, inside the inside the Bible. And he's running away from that topic. He's hiding behind the Quran. Okay? We are done with the topic of the Quran. I did that for two hours, you I'm exhausted actually. I'm just I'm on overdrive over here. Okay, so you know I, I let you go. I keep letting you go on. I'm saying, listen, I don't want to redot you, Christian Prince. I don't want to redot you. But we have to talk about the Bible. Okay? I'm not going to say, oh, look, the whole Bible is corrupt. Christian Prince, I want to know from you, as a Bible-believing Christian, how do they view the topics of genocide and terrorism? Are they legitimate tactics of war? Clearly they are. Because 2 Timothy 3.16 ratifies everything of the New Testament. I'm sorry, of the Old Testament. Okay? 
these are legitimate tactics of war according to the Bible. We see here that your own Lord and Savior, you know, talked about killing babies and mass extermination of, of just exactly what Adolf Hitler did. Now, I'm not comparing him to Hitler, but I'm saying, look, it's the same thing. So, anyways, I think I had five seconds, but um, go ahead, Christian Prince. This is your last time. you got to talk about Christianity now, okay? Go ahead. I'm not stopping you from talking about Christianity. And you know what? If you run, honestly, everybody will laugh at you. Until now, you did not read even the verse you are talking about. When I ask you to read a verse, you say to me, I am not your white woman. When you say something, read it, post it for us in the text, so everybody can see what you are talking about. Secondly, when I answer you from your Quran, because I understand who are they, the Muslims. Muslims are people, you cannot beat them from any book, because after all, after 10 hours debating them, they will say to you, your book is corrupted for us. When I beat you from your Quran, you cry, because you cannot say it's corrupted. So I go straight to the point where I can burn you alive. Not in a terrorist way, by the words. And you are exhausted because really you've been humiliated. And you will not explain to me why your God, Allah, ordering the Jew to go and kill the Palestinian. Aren't you Muslims today supporting the Palestinian? Aren't you Muslims today say the Israeli are terrorists? Suddenly we see that the God of Islam is the big terrorist. According to your book, according to your logic, he is telling them, go and take the land. How? In a fight. And I gave you the first proof. I have many of them coming. Nadir Ahmed, and you will not read. And everybody in the room is watching. You will not read. Because you knew, if you read what I am giving you, Everybody will laugh at Quran. Everybody will laugh at Allah. So what you are complaining about in the Bible, it is in your Quran. This is how funny and how silly the Muslims are. Now, are you going to read for me? Please, go ahead. All right, I guess the debate is over. You know, we've already talked about this issue about, you know, for two hours now about Islam and terrorism. You had your opportunity for two hours, well, make it hour and a half, to try to prove that and you could not I am challenging you on the Bible and yours and you want to hide behind the Quran okay I can't force you to answer 2 Timothy 316 so I guess the debates over everybody sees the type of person Christian Prince is. you know he wants to he cannot even defend his own religion because it can't be defended that's the reason why okay it cannot be defended Christian Prince the people listening to the debate will uh, make the decision for themselves, you know, who, who is a coward, who is a loser running away. You know, we've debated, we've debated Islam and you systematically refuse to address the genocide and terrorism of your false Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that is what has been clearly shown tonight. And you are a hypocrite and a deceiver. But Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Islam has refuted you and has exposed your lies and your deception. Alhamdulillah. And this is why we say that Islam is a religion of peace. And why we say that Islam is a religion of truth. Because Islam came to confront and condemn the genocide and the terrorism of biblical Christianity and the false Lord Jesus Christ war against humanity. Christian Prince is actually ashamed to see the, his own religion. To see how your God that you worship is actually is the biggest I mean, I can't use the word terrorist, terrorist because terrorists are angels compared to the false Lord Jesus Christ. Right? You have an entire book, the book of Joshua which glorifies and champions genocide and mass extermination okay and we haven't even got to Luke 19 uh, 1927 and to show how Jesus said anybody who based I'm paraphrasing who does not accept me as Lord bring them hither and slay them before me you see the born-again Christians were also studying these passages during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and they saw, yes, mass exterminations and terrorism is clearly the way of the Lord. Okay? And so anyways, I am like, I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> I think, I, uh, now Christian Prince, I want to ask you a question. Will you post this debate on your website? Because you are claiming victory. Okay, no problemo. You won tonight's debate. How does that sound? But you do me one favor. Will you post this debate on your website? Okay? Will you post the debate on your website? Yes or no, Christian Prince? Okay, take the mic. Absolutely. This debate, guys, all of you, you can see it in muhammadtube.com. Somebody post the link. muhammadtube.com. This is where we expose Muhammad and his faith. And as long you are running from this debate... Christian Prince, you can take the mic, but please don't use such language, okay? Go ahead, take the mic. You called my Lord false. I can call your Lord false too. Hello? Shame on you. And I invite you to come and debate, if you have the courage. I came to your room. To debate about your God Allah. We want to know who is your Allah. I challenge you to accept. And we will pose the same debate in MuhammadTube.com. Everybody in the room, I want to say thank you all very much for being here. And as you see, we expose the filth of Islam and the filth of Muhammad, the one who was a gay and he was molesting kid. You know, obviously because Christian Prince took a beating tonight, he has to uh, resort to that kind of abuse. You know, I mean, it's really sad to see you behave like this, Christian Prince. But let me invite you all to the truth of all of al Islam. Okay, all of these teachings about Trinity, these things are not true. How do we know Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a true prophet? That's the topic of tonight's debate. Okay, the evidence which I will present to you, ladies and gentlemen, in this room, is because if you look at the war doctrine of Islam, genocide and mass extermination is clearly forbidden in that. Okay, but the uh, but genocide and mass extermination is fully embraced and encouraged in biblical Christianity. That's the difference. Islam condemns terrorism while biblical Christianity fully promotes and endorses mass extermination and terrorism. And you cannot find me a single quote from the Bible which could condemn the actions of Hitler. Rather, Adolf Hitler did exactly what Jesus Christ would have done. Right? We have an, there is no book on earth which champions mass extermination more than your book. And that's why this coward Christian prince is running away. Because he sees, it's, you know, everything he says about Islam, he sees the filth in his own religion. And you're a charlatan, Christian prince. Allahu Akbar, walhamdulillah, I at least, I debate both topics. I debate Islam and Christianity, I debate them fairly. You can't debate both of them. You're finished. You're going to post this on your website, I'll post it on mine. Okay, because I'd give you the mic, but I know all you're going to do is just basically curse and condemn and stuff like that. Alright, so... I tell you what, if there's some people who want to answer, ask questions, please go ahead. You can raise your hand and I will answer questions. Okay, and we'll do that one minute for about five minutes and I'm just toast and I'm going to get out of here, alright? Alright, go ahead, Nash, the mic is yours. No, it's my turn, my mic, my mic. So you agree that you've been toast? I understand, you've been toast, B big time. And Nader Ahmad, you are saying to me, I'm running. You are the one who's leaving, not me. I am still in your room. I am willing to stay and debate you more two hours. You are the one who said you are toasted already. I can tell you've been smoked. Secondly, Nader, you don't talk about running when you are the one who is running. And the funny you just said that the topic it was if the Prophet Muhammad was a prophet or not. When you just stayed in the beginning, you start saying that if Islam is a religion of terrorism or not. If the Bible, This is the topic now? Man, you change the topic even in the end of the debate? We were debating for two hours if Muhammad was a prophet now? <laughs> this guy, he forgot even what the topic was. This is how bad he was toasted. This is how bad he was smoked. The debate... You did not debate me if your prophet is a prophet or not. Wake up, Nadir Ahmed. Wake up. You are drunk. You did debate me about terrorism. Hello. You forgot? Now, as long as this is the topic you like, what about you challenge me to debate about if your prophet is a prophet or not? 
Do you accept? What about we do it tomorrow in marriage? I challenge you to accept. Do you think, guys, Nader Ahmed will accept? Muhammad is a prophet or not? If you want now, I have no problem. Honestly, I am still in the room. We can take two hours to debate if you're a prophet, but I know he will not accept because he's too coward to say yes. I challenge you right now to debate me. Muhammad is a prophet or not in Europe? Or come to my room tomorrow, I challenge you to come to my room. Muhammad is a prophet or not in my room? Which one you you know you, you like, uh, Nader? Your room, my room. Muhammad is a prophet or not? Your mind. What Christian Prince is doing here is some damage control. You know, he made a fool out of himself tonight. He could not show any terrorism from the text of the Quran. But rather, his holy book is filled with terrorism and genocide. You see, Christian Prince, you don't seem to understand something. This fact that Islam condemns terrorism and genocide, and not only that, but Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saved the Jews from the genocide of the born-again Christians. Had it not been for jihad, all of the Jews would have been exterminated off the face of the planet by the born-again Christians. These Nazi Christians who are the true Christians, and they were reading the very same passages that we are re sharing in tonight. I mean, dude, you, show, you expose yourself as a coward who couldn't even debate his own religion. Okay? You are a charlatan. I mean, you're the biggest loser on the face of this planet. All you want to do is throw mud on Islam. Well, we refuted your trash tonight. And this is a second debate, ladies and gentlemen, that I refuted this guy. Okay, let me share, give you the other debate. All right, let me give you this other debate right here. I want everyone to listen to that debate. It's very short, 55 minutes, something like that, okay? And you will see how I make this man barbecued, okay? As for debating Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I believe he's already been proved, and we invite you to come to Islam, not to listen to these lies here on Pal Talk. Okay, it's clearly. And by the way, did you know we've had more debates on this topic? Let me give you a more comprehensive debate on Islam and terrorism. Okay, this is a video debate: um, Islam and terrorism. There we go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Examine the. Truth.com. I debated this inside Los Angeles. So it's to show you guys that, hey, you know what? I'm actively debating this topic. And you will see that all of these liars who have been teaching you these things, that Islam is somehow teaches this stuff, you know, they're, they're, they're misleading you. Okay, look, listen to both sides. Don't just listen to this hate preacher, Christian Prince. Everybody should know that he's a loser, all right? He cannot even apply the same standard to his own religion. I gave him two hours to debate this, and anyways, um, I would like to debate you some more, Christian Prince. Actually, it's your good. I like to use you for target practice, because when I actually have real debates in public, like I, I did one um, last weekend inside uh, Norfolk, you're you're good practice for that. I'm not very good at you know like orator and you know I mean giving like these speeches, so I think you'd be good target practice for me. But anyway, so inshallah. Tomorrow, I don't know. I would have to see my schedule. You know, I'm a very busy man, but I will come moseying on by into your room, and we will have another debate soon. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to close a room. All right? Uh, no, Christian Prince, I think you have you said enough. Put your hand down. All right? Thank you for coming, and, and may God bless all the Muslims, and may Allah guide you all to Islam.